Hello. Um, well, I'm Lizzie, um, and I'm the educational media producer with CADAN. Um, thank you all for coming today. And I thought before I did anything that we'd have a little warm-up, brain warm-up session. <laughs> um, and do some brainstorming and just interrogate um, you know, the, the idea of education and media and why we're, we're doing it. Um, so, now I have to learn how to use this slide thing. Let's start by ask, asking what is educational media? What is it? Anything. Anything? <laughs> Anything? Text, images. Text and then images? Video, audio. Okay, text, images, <coughs> video, audio. These are all formats, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to write neatly. <laughs> so it's something that's used to promote learning mm -hmm. on part of a student, which may or may not involve teachers teaching. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, yeah. Something um, used to promote learning. It's going to take me ages to write all of this, isn't it? Um, without the teachers sometimes. Sometimes. Not necessarily. Um, yes, so that's what it does. That's the kind of format. Um, I mean, it is media, isn't it? So... We're talking about the formats of media, all these different things. Any other kind of formats we can think of? Web pages. Web pages, yeah. Documents. Documents, yeah. Text. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any kind of text. A book. Games. Games, yes. That's one I don't often think about. Hmm, I don't think I can help with that one, but... <laughs> Apps on mobile devices. Yeah, like loads of things, like, wow. <sighs> Getting a bit exhausted already. So what, what about some examples of, of what kind of videos, for instance? What kind of videos could there be? That how, could... how to knit. Hmm? How to knit. How to knit. How to videos. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a type of video, a genre, I guess we could call it, couldn't we? How to. How to kill your chickens humanely was what I was looking at the other day. I would love to share that video. We decided not to do it in the end. We thought they'd let them in. I'm going to kill them inhumanely. Okay, that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, how to videos is a genre of video that can be used to educate. Any other type of video? A virtual tour. A virtual tour. Awesome. And that can be done in, in a picture format as well. Like you could do a, three, a 360 degree kind of picture. We found a really, really great website that does that, IKEA. They did a brilliant virtual tour of a little house. Oh, it was great. <laughs> They're so cool. <laughs> so what's this? Virtual tour. Great ideas. Any other type of...? The boring MIT video lectures. <laughs> OK, so kind of MOOC le lectures, right? MOOC-style lectures. Oh, webcasts are little ones, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Um, so what would a webcast do? It would be like we're in the room now and we're casting online and showing what we're doing now, basically. Yeah. Inspirational. Yeah. So you, if you're not there, you can still see it. What? Did someone say to me earlier? I say just informational, instructional. Yeah, instructional. So just like you know, just talking, talking, mm -hmm. showing. Mhm. Mm um, instructional. What about? Instructional. What about audio? What kind of? Examples of audio could we have? The kind of things that we could make? Podcasts. A podcast? Interview? <laughs> Tom, don't cheat. You've been here. <laughs> <coughs> podcast. <coughs> interview. You could do... So a podcast, the format of a podcast could work in video too. It's just the audio version of the same kind of thing, an interview or documentary, anything like that. <coughs> Interviews as well can be done visually, I guess. To conversation. A conversation. Which would be a bit different from an interview. Yes. And a presentation. A presentation. Uh, did you say that? Yeah. <laughs> um, in audio. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. A pre uh, the recording of the presentation. Of yes. Yeah. Any kind of documentary recording. Which, of course, you could also do in, in video. Presentation. Pres I'm stuck now. Aha. Um, 
News. Yep. Again, in video two. Games. Give me some ideas for games. I like this one. <laughs> I haven't thought about games before. Matching games. Matching games. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sort of like um, concentration. Do you think games can work in higher education as well? Yes. Yeah. Cool. C matching, concentration, any kind of game. What my son likes. Dragon Veil. It's educational. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> um, Simulation. Simulation. Mm. 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 Would that come under game? Yeah. Well, yeah. it could be. Yeah, serious games. Is it? Behavior. Mm, lovely. That's good. Oh, I'm getting some good ideas. So, all of these ideas, um, obviously images, text, all of these things. Um, we're going to concentrate on video today. And one of the reasons is that it does incorporate a lot of these formats, more so than maybe an image would only incorporate, you know, it's a picture, that's all. So video incorporates a lot more of those of formats, so you learn more if we're just going to concentrate on video. And also, we've only got one day, so <laughs> we're not going to be able to concentrate on too much. So that's why we're concentrating on video. So that's a format, and educational media is media, and it educates, as you said, Mary. Um, how does it educate? Could I add another idea on to yes. that? Um, because quite often we see people who make stuff, but they haven't really thought through what is a student meant to do with the thing they're making. Mm -hmm. So is there some kind of active learning, some kind of task that the student is meant to do with the video or with the media? Yes. So task What based. should the student do? So that's, that's how the media educates. So uh, someone's going to have to look up the lights. <laughs> what should the student do? So can you give an example, Mary? Um, well, I used to teach Chinese, so watch uh, a really simple one I did for my first year Chinese class was watch these videos of authentic speaking and find all the patterns that we studied in this lesson in yeah. this video. Yeah, that's so a good one. So kind of an analysis. Kind Learning of languages, right? Learning languages. Um, what other ways can it be used to teach media? Things, it, it, it's that whole thing, isn't it, of, of having something that is a resource or it, it, it contains information in some format. And to promote learning, you've got to also say what the purpose is. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, you, you have an you have information purpose mm -hmm. um, which leads to an activity, mm -hmm. which leads to some sort of assessment. Mm, assessment? Or well, some kind of progress, right? Yeah, and it, yeah, it, it can be it can be a sort of self-assessment or summative assessment. Mm -hmm. um. Inspire students. You might use it as a way of yeah. engaging with the material. Yeah. So one of the good one of the powerful things about things like audio and video, as opposed to the standard thing that students have had in at least when I was a kid, <laughs> books. Um, which are also wonderful at teaching in their, in their own way, is this different type of media can engage students more and inspire. So that is its power. Um, <coughs> engage, inspire, and obviously... They can also bore. Uh, if they're done badly, <laughs> yes. yes, yes. And if yeah. the student's not engaged properly in what, they want, want, what they're learning, it could bore. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> I've seen plenty of them. Oh, One thing yeah. that, like the MIT Open Course where you mentioned, if you're watching somebody have a discussion, it's a very different process than being in the discussion where you can contribute to it. Absolutely. Mm, being involved. As, as it can be for an audio interview. Exactly. Um, the medium does not necessarily improve the message. It can, it can be the message, but not necessarily improve it. Yep, absolutely. And that's why doing, making media has to be done properly or else you waste it. Just like writing a book or an article has to be done properly or it's wasted, no one's going to read it. Oh, I can't get into this, I don't understand it, I'm not going to read it. Same with video, same with audio, same with all of it. Any other ways that it can be used to educate, what's special about it? Anybody with special needs, you can either audio describe Special. Or subtitles, or yes, that's brilliant. And the volume, whatever. 
And people learn in different ways, don't they? Mm. So, um, you know, someone like me might be quite used to and good at reading books, but some, someone else, equally intelligent, might be good at watching videos, and that's how they learn, visually. So, yeah, different ways of learning, special needs. I mean, so you, be you believe in learning styles. Uh, I, I do, but uh, some don't. Um, you know, it, it, does, uh, it, uh, it caters for different preferences. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that was supported by the survey that we've run, ran in 2010 and 13, where students self-identified, but they tended to be multimodal learners. So they felt that seeing something and hearing about it was equally important to reading about it, for example, and having a go was very high as well. So if you're doing all of those, it will enrich everybody's learning. Yeah. Um, something that Russ mentioned yesterday, which is quite good, is it also different ways of teaching. So when you have a different way of teaching, you're encouraging the lecturer, the teacher, to think about it again and think about it in a different way and think, how, what's the point? What am I actually trying to talk to people about? Which I think is, is a kind of, that's a really good point. <laughs> so let's put that down somewhere. So encourages rethinks. <laughs> But essentially, I mean, you're not trying to put a book into a video, are you? So you are actually imparting different types of information um, to, to your students when you make different types of media. Because it's impossible to make an academic book into a video. It doesn't work. Um, cool. Going back to my little uh, PowerPoint here. <sighs> What's the actual time? The actual time is 20 minutes past 10. Mm. OK. Did that get you guys thinking? <laughs> that was kind of fun. So I was going to um, talk a little bit more about how it does take you know, time and effort. It does. Making a video, making anything takes time and effort. Writing a book takes time and effort. It takes thought, it takes skill. But that's what, um, you know, it's worth it in the end because you've got an item, just like you've got a book. Um, I think we've probably, I'm going to cut it a bit short now so that we can keep on time with, for us. And um, there are strengths and limitations to all of these different formats, all of these different types of media. Um, so they're not appropriate for all things. And we just have to bear that in mind when we go and, and, and make something. Um, and, you know, a video is not the answer to everything. So. <laughs> but it is pretty cool. So... Well, that's what we're going to do in this, web, in this um, workshop. We're going to talk more about video in particular and try and work, and I'm going to try and break down the barriers for you. I'm going to try and make it not look easy, but make you realise that you can do it. I'm going to ins hopefully inspire you to give it a go if you haven't already. I'm sure most of you have. And um, give you the tools to, to make it happen. None of this, none of what we're going to talk about now, none of this equipment is rocket science. It's actually mostly common sense. Fiddle, have a go, and you'll get there. That's the general gist of it. So that's what we want to do in this workshop. Um, <coughs> so apart from trying to show you how easy it is, I also want to um, show you how to get quality easily. Because if you don't do something well, if you don't make a good video, no one's going to watch it, and it's a complete waste of time. So you do have to make effort to create quality, but as I said, it's not rocket science. So quality and ease, those are the two aims. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get there. Um, so can I ask a question? Yes. Um, the concept of good enough, mm -hmm. how does that fit with when you... Because when you, when you say video quality, you, you know, immediately you start to think, you know, sort of quite high-end quality. Yes. And there's another quality, which... Um, it's good enough. Is, you know, we're, potentially good enough. I think um, we're we will discuss that when I do my presentation, okay. because that is the, the, the starting point, and that's where I want to start. What is good? Okay. And I'll ask you. Yeah. Let's see what you think. And I'll give you my opinions. Obviously, there's a whole range of different issues to consider, but yeah. good enough? Are they going to watch it? <laughs> the result, I guess, decides what's good enough.
So, let's just run through the schedule quickly for today. Um, is that the schedule? You've all got a schedule in your packs. Yes. Um, there's lots of things in your packs, <laughs> and I'll talk you through a few of them. Um, we had fun printing all of those out yesterday. So, we've just gone through our little brainstorming session, so it should be about 10.30 now. Next up is my esteemed colleague Russ, who's going to talk about the kit, and he's just going to tell you what it is and what, what you can use it for, if you haven't worked it out already. Then we're going to have a much needed coffee break at 11.30 for a quarter of an hour. Then, uh, pushing into lunchtime, I'm going to talk about principles of production, and that's really talking about what you should do, what you shouldn't do, how to achieve quality easily. Um, then it's lunch, and we're having lunch down in Tamedda. <laughs> Tamedda. Um, and you've all got in your packs a, a voucher for a free lunch. Yay. <laughs> and I think a hot drink. Um, so if we can get back here in good time to start the afternoon, the afternoon will be practical. So I'm afraid you're going to have to listen to us going on and on in the morning. We'll try and make it interactive, but uh, there's lots to get through. Um, and in the afternoon, I'll, I'll introduce the exercise, what you're going to be doing, put you into groups of three, there'll be five groups of three, we, we'll have two each, Matt at the back is going to have one of you guys and take you off somewhere, and secret, it's secret, you're not allowed to tell the other teams what you're making, and uh, you're, going to, you're going to script it, you're going to shoot it, and you're going to edit it, hopefully, <laughs> and then when that's done, at three o'clock, we hope, we'll all come back here and we'll share our products and we'll discuss and we'll you know pick it to pieces and say oh that was really rubbish or that was brilliant well done that kind of thing and then at four o'clock to five o'clock there's an optional mingle it'd be nice to have a little bit of you know leeway in case we run over which we probably will um but we'll aim not to and we're going to do you know have some nice chatting time if you want to stay on and there will be i think there's cakes um so <laughs> ah any more housekeeping that i need to do Make sure we get the. When should we collect the consent forms? Oh, after the filming during the review session? Okay. Yeah, is that okay? And because the, some of the things in your packs you'll need to be looking at and filming, um, filling in as you do the exercise. So there is a script template in there, and so you're going to write the script on it and things like that. So you, you we can look through those in the afternoon when we're in our teams. And I think, oh yes, one more thing, I think. We are filming. Um, in the hope that we can share the presentations uh, uh, later, at a later date. So afterwards, I'm going to write a review and send you these presentations and send you these PTs and things like that. So I um, hope that's okay with everyone that we're filming. <laughs> Mostly you're back, so don't worry. Right, I think that's it. I'm going to introduce Russ now, and he's going to start his presentation on, on the kit.